Hello, I'm Johnny Bairstow and welcome to this Future Net Zero Insights interview. Today I'm joined by Mark Garner from Schneider Electric. So hello Mark, thanks for joining. Hi Johnny, nice to meet you. And uh, could you quick please give us a background, uh, just in case some of our audience might not know who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm a, a fairly new starter into Schneider and I've been here for 15 years. Um, uh, so I joined uh, the business uh, as a graduate uh, back in 2005. Um, I'm working my way through the organization in various different different parts of it. So I'm working in low voltage equipment um, in our uh, in our cable management part of the business. But most recently, for the last three years, I've been in our secure power division, uh, which is responsible for the uh, the Schneider Electric strategy into the, the data center segment. Perfect. Well, thanks for the introduction. And uh, you mentioned data centers there. That's what we're going to be talking about today and kind of their role on the net zero journey and what you're doing in that space at Schneider Electric. Uh, so you, you might not like me asking you this question. Uh, it's going to be your bread and butter, uh, but I need to know, and some of our audience might need it clearing up. What is a data center in simple terms? It is a, a great question and one I spend uh, uh, communicating to my family on a regular basis. Um, so I, I guess the official answer is a data center is a, a physical uh, building or a physical location in a building that houses IT services or, or mission critical infrastructure. Ultimately, it's a, a part of the building that's, that's managing data. Um, either for the building or for applications uh, in, in, in and around uh, the building. Um, when I when I talk to my family around this, um, and I'm I'm not an engineer by trade, so I, I break it down as simple as I can do. If you take a photo uh, on your phone, then ultimately that photo is going to the cloud somewhere. The cloud is ultimately a physical location that will be holding data. Um, now there's this multiple different types of data center. You have your, your, your hyperscale facilities, which are, are generally built by your internet giants, your, um, your Microsofts, your Amazons, your Google, and they'll operate and, and manage those data centers themselves and, and hold vast amounts of data in there. You also have uh, more regional uh, multi-tenant data centers where uh, they're, they're co-located. So you'll have maybe some retail application in there. Starbucks might be saving their, their data, for example. Um, but then you'd also maybe have some of the, the hyperscaler data in there as well. But then you get to the, the, the third tier, which is more localized data centers. So the building which your, your office is in will have a, uh, a, a compute, uh, a, a, a data center in there with servers and, and IT services within it. And that in itself is a data center. The decision on where and which which uh, which data center you use you probably use all three of them is is the reality but um when you need the data to be close to the source so if it's in a manufacturing plant the robotics uh require a, a flow of data and, and they need that data quickly then you'll have a data center you'll store that store that information to manage the robotics arm for example locally uh, next to the machinery if you save your photo to the cloud, there's no need for that to be immediately next to you and you can wait a couple of couple of seconds for that to download. So it's just where and when and when that 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 data is needed and how it's being used. So that's why I have to wait when I go into my uh, iPhone and I see one of the photos that's stored there and I click it. It's not actually on my phone, it's having to come down from the data center. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Well, fantastic explanation. Um, you've cleared things up for me. So thank you very much. Um, and I it think never, my- It never seems to work with my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might forget halfway through the interview, so you'll have to remind me again. <laughs> uh, but uh, the world's becoming increasingly digital. You know, more, more of us are using more phones and taking more pictures and obviously businesses as well uh, are ramping up digital demand and consumption massively. Uh, everything's becoming smarter. So I've got to ask, what does the energy demand of data centers look like? Because we're bound to be using more and more and more and more powerful and powerful data centers as time goes by. So what does the demand look like and how is it expected to increase, do you think? It, it's, it's really difficult to assess, uh, to be honest with you, Johnny. Um, there are various predictions around data center energy usage uh, and the demands. The one thing that everyone agrees on is the 
the capacity is going to increase. Um, you know, we're, we're all more digital. The last year has really proven that. Um, I'm in the office today, but I've spent most of the last year in, uh, in in my house and interacting with customers and with 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 the press and with my teams through through the digital medium. Um, and to mention the uh, Netflix data centres. And that as well, yes, yeah, and uh, the, the 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 many that have popped up around those. I mean, that that's that's a really interesting example, though, when you when you start to think about that. So Netflix have uh, some of those regional data centres that allow you to access the top ten uh, watched programmes quicker than what you would do maybe on the the the, uh, the ones that are uh, are less watched. Oh, really? Well, that's fascinating. You wouldn't have thought of that, would you? It's, it's this edge application, having it closer to the source and, and where it's needed. If you look at um, uh, the, the, uh, the Frankfurt, Lam uh, London, Amsterdam, Paris, uh, they're the main uh, main areas uh, that, that where most of the compute, most of the data centers are. Uh, the expectation is that in 2021, there'll be around 400 megawatts of new data center built across those areas. It, ultimately, it's the digital, digital fabric of our lives now is, is just growing and growing. The buildings are becoming more intelligent, more reliant on, on data, not just how we, how we use the, uh, the, the, the technology. So everything for the past 12 months means that the, the data centers have become a pivotal part of our lives. By 2025, IT will consume around about 8.5% of the global electricity usage which is up around 3.5% from, from where we were in 2018. So we're about 5% in 2018. Um, it, it's the, the, the measure there it includes telecommunication as well. So it, it's not maybe the true view of what, what the data center uh, aspect of it will be. However, ultimately what we can say is the need is gonna grow. And with that, the need to be more efficient in, in terms of the operation and, and how that data center works grows with it. Yeah, so I suppose the million dollar question really is how can that carbon footprint, uh, which we're all trying to reduce across all sectors, how can the carbon footprint of data centres be reduced simultaneously to demand for data centres skyrocketing? How can we do that? It's it's the challenge we all face at the moment there, Johnny. And, and we have to take a holistic look at the uh, the sustainability agenda sustainability st strategy not just with data centers but also um if you look more broadly than that so um the example i'd, I'd like to use is take take um take the the overall ambition for for sustainability for for the uk for example um in order to get there in order to to achieve those sustainability sustainability targets you're going to you're going to need data centers. So data is going to play a huge part in uh, in driving efficiency and in, in in how we use, consume, generate uh, generate electricity. Let's take micro microgrids as an example. So um, today we we generate electricity through through uh, power stations. We also do it through uh, solar farms, through wind farms, through uh, through through generators. There's so many different ways now that we can produce energy within our um, within our own scope. In order to decide what's the most efficient energy to use at the right time in the right place, you need flow of data around that. So data centers are actually going to be an enabler for sustainability. Uh, and I think this is missed a lot of the time because everyone looks at the the, the huge capacity that a data center takes in terms of terms of energy and it and it absolutely does um, but for us to be able to drive the sustainability agenda more broadly um, data is going to play a core component in that yeah i understand that and like you say you you might not picture that immediately but as you said the consumption from data centers is going to grow significantly but yeah, yeah that's going to be outstripped by the savings that data enables in all areas of the economy yes absolutely that said we as a as an industry as a data center industry though have to do our bit and become more efficient in terms of how we manage owner operate and build our, our data centers uh, and well, what's, what's driving sustainability at the moment in the sector it's uh, so uh, largely it's it's consumers um, or the customers. So uh, everyone has their own their own uh, uh, sustainability agenda. And take Schneider Electric as a, a as a company in their own right. You know we 
we, we want to be carbon uh, carbon neutral by 2025. We, we've got no SF6 by 2025. We're, we're, we're engaging with our supply chain to become carbon neutral by, by 2050. So we have these ambitions as a business and, and ultimately that, that supply chain of which the data center will be part and parcel of it because it's it's part of our embedded carbon carbon footprint. Um, we're asking our our suppliers and our uh, and, and our partners how they can become greener and, uh, and more efficient and more sustainable. So a lot of this really comes from the the requirements of uh, of the consumers. And we, we we conducted a survey. Um, last year uh, with 451 Research, where we went to 800 uh, global data centres in, in over 20 different countries, just to get some feedback in terms of where they were on their sustainability journey and how their plans were to, to move themselves forward and, and keep moving forward. So 43% of, of the respondents said to us that they've got a strategic sustainability programme. Um, but the of their customer base, we asked the question, how many uh, of their consumers uh, or their customers uh, are asking for contractual sustainability commitments. 97% of their com uh, customers are asking for, for commitment around sustainability. So we have this gap here. There's a, there's a gap between what's currently being done and, and what's currently being asked. Um, and I think this is where the, the focus needs to be. There's a raft of new technology coming onto the market, efficient um, UPS, liquid cooling, um, uh, and these are the type of technologies that we need to look at to keep moving the needle within the data center industry to uh, to reduce the energy we're consuming, whilst also balancing out the increased need of data, which is inevitable. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it difficult as we become more and more reliant on data, we obviously need more resilience, uh, more redundancy, I suppose. Um, and more security, really, of that whole system, because it's going to become the backbone of the way we live. How do we balance that need for increased efficiency with the need for those factors, such as increased redundancy means you might have to have, you know, uh, much, so much more kits running with extra power in case there's a shortage to kind of cover that. How, how do you balance those two? Ultimately, it's around um, uh, the, the build, the infrastructure and, and how you ultimately construct your, your data centres. If you think around those three tiers that I talked, talked through earlier, um, the tiering of uh, local uh, data centres, uh, co-located data centres and, uh, and, uh, and, and the big operator-owned data centres, um, that gives you a level of redundancy within there and there'll be redundancy that's, that's built into the, into the structure. But then beyond that, you need to start looking at technology and the advancements in technology. So if you take Schneider Electric have just uh, in, in the last uh, last month released the Galaxy VL UPS, hugely efficient, so up to 99% efficiency uh, through the through the UPS. But with that same capacity to drive more uptime and more reliability uh, within within the system, um, and it's it's working through the initial build program, managing the challenges of of capital expenditure against the operational expenditure. To make sure that you you're building a uh, a resilient and efficient uh, data center to meet everyone's needs. Well, you mentioned there are some technologies that Schneider Electric is uh, developing for its customers. Uh, in what other ways would you say you're helping operators develop strategies for the greener data centers of the future? There's a number of different ways. If you look across our whole whole organization, um, and a lot of this starts to starts to come from this this data driven as well. Uh, you you need to know where you are before you can start to take actions and, and make those changes. Um, I talked at, at, at Data Centre Dynamics uh, uh, last year uh, around where we are on the journey. And it, it, it really, really is a journey. Uh, I think the, the, the important thing is that you know that you're on the journey and, uh, and then understanding whereabouts you are on it. If you're at, right at the very start, that's great. It just means that you've got to find a plan then to start to move it forward and, and how you move it forward. And some of that comes from benchmarking where you are to start off with. So the data around it, analyzing how efficient your, your system's operating. Um, really important to bring the people element within an organization on side as well. People within the organization, the customer base as well, that they understand where you're going to, how you're going to get there, 
um, the challenges that's going to come from it because we're all, you know, operations are automated as much as possible, but people are always behind it and people make to make some of these decisions as well. And you need to make sure there's consistency across the whole organization to get there. Um, we have a um, four stage plan in, in Schneider and we've worked with a number of different data center operators where uh, we, we help them go into their organizations, do this assessment right from the very start, give them the stage plan that says, these are your quick wins. These are the things that you can do very quickly and, and start to get some return on, on that investment. Uh, but then the stage plan that keeps working you through. So you keep pushing the needle and keep pushing it forward. As a business, we we, we look at the, the te technology side of things. So our, our, our equipment by 2025 will be SF6 gas free. Um, a huge step in in the environmental direction, the right environmental direction of, uh, of becoming more sustainable for, for us as a business, but also for our customer base. Um, and then our software systems, ecostructure, DSIM, how do you take the information out there and make uh, educated decisions around the, uh, uh, the, the, what, your, what your data center is telling you? Um, and, and even benchmark it against you know other data within your estate, data centers within your estate, uh, and understand where that uh, where they are against each other. Why is one operating at eighty percent capacity and the other one's at one hundred percent? Perfect. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I'm sure our audience, those data operators out there, uh, are going to be keenly listening to that last answer. Uh, and I thank you for so much for an enlightening interview. I've learned a lot, certainly. Um, and I look forward to catching up again in the future to see how things have progressed in the next five years. I'm sure there's going to be a tremendous amount of change and growth, uh, hopefully in the green direction. Change is one thing we can all, we all guarantee at the moment, I think. So, uh, so yeah, I look forward to speaking to you again, Johnny. Thank you.